I am done building my own kingdom. No more seeking worthless idols. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Idols raised, tear them down, because we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. To one king we bow down, as for me and my house, we will only serve the Lord. I'm done with powerless religion, no more living in deception. Like sheep we have all gone astray, we must choose this day whom we will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord. Idols raised to tear them down, cause we will serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord. To one king we bow down, as far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We'll cross over Jordan. We will claim what our, what you promised. We will not go our hearts to another. We will not give our hearts to another. We belong to the Lord. We will not give our hearts to another. We will not give our hearts to another. We will only serve the lord hello and welcome to the bible with prisco i will be your narrator shenandoah brisco and we are going to get through the bible in one year today is day 85 and we're going to be covering joshua 22 through 24 and luke 3 father i just ask for purity and articulation so that this narration may be a blessing to you and all of those who are listening. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Alrighty then, here we go. Sorry about that. Eastern tribes return home. Joshua 22. Then Joshua summoned the Ribbonites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manash, and said to them, You have done all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded, and you have obeyed me in everything I commanded. For a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your fellow Israelites, but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you. Now that the Lord your God has given them rest, as he promised, return to your homes in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But be very careful to keep commandment, the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you to love the Lord your God to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commands, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then Joshua blessed them and sent them away. And they went to their homes, to the half-tribe of Manish Moses, had given land in Bashan, and to the other half of the tribe Joshua had gave land on the west side of the Jordan, along with their fellow Israelites. When Joshua sent them home, he blessed them, saying, Return to your home with your great wealth, with large herds of livestock, with silver, gold, bronze, and iron, and a great quantity of clothing. And divide the plunder from your enemies with your fellow Israelites. So the Rimanites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manish left the Israelites at Shiloh in Canaan to return to Galad, their own land, which they had acquired in accordance with the command of the Lord there through Moses. 
when they came to Galad, or Galath, near the Jordan, in the land of Canaan, the Rebbenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manash built an imposing altar there by the Jordan. And when the Israelites heard that they had built the altar on the border of Canaan at Geloth, near the Jordan, on the Israelites' side, the whole assembly of Israel gathered at Shiloh to go to war against them. So the Israelites sent Phinehas, son of Eliezer, Elizar, the priest, to the land of Galid, Gilead, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manash. With him they sent ten of the chief men, one from each of the tribes of Israel, each the head of a family division among the Israelite clans. When they went to Galid, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manish, they said to them, The whole assembly of the Lord says, How could you break faith with the God of Israel like this? How could you turn away from the Lord and build yourselves an altar in rebellion against him? Now, what was not the sin of Peor enough for us? Up to this day, very day, we have cleansed ourselves from that sin, even though a plague fell on the community of the Lord. And are you now turning away from the Lord? If you re rebel against the Lord today, tomorrow he will be angry with the whole community of Israel. If the land you possess is defiled, come over to the Lord's land, where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and share the land with us. But do not rebel against the Lord or against us by building an altar for yourselves other than the altar of the Lord our God. When Achin, son of Zerah, was unfaithful in regard to the devoted things, in regard to the devoted things, did not wrath come on the whole community of Israel? He was not the only one who died for his sin. Then Reuben, Gad, and half-tribe of Manish replied to the heads of the clans of Israel, The Mighty One, God, the Lord, the Mighty One, God, the Lord, He knows, and let Israel know, if this has been in rebellion of disobedience to the Lord, do not spare us this day. If we have built our own altar to turn away from the Lord and to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings or to sacrifice fellowship offerings on it, may the Lord himself call us to account. No, we did it for fear that some day your descendants might say to ours, What do you have to do with the Lord? the God of Israel. The Lord has made the Jordan a boundary between us and you, you Reubenites and Gaduites. You have no share in the Lord, so your descendants might cause ours to stop fearing the Lord. That is why we said, let us get ready and build an altar, but not for burnt offerings or sacrifices. On the contrary, it is to be a witness between us and you and the generations that follow that we will worship the Lord at his sanctuary with our burnt offerings, sacrifices, and fellowship offerings. Then, in the future, your descendants will not be able to say to ours, You have no share in the Lord. And we said, if they ever say this to us, our two or to our descendants, we will answer, Look at the replica of the Lord's altar, which our ancestors built, not for burnt offerings and sacrifices, but as a witness between us and you. Far be it from us to rebuild 
against the Lord and turn away from him. Today, by building an altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrifices other than the altar of the Lord our God that stands before his tabernacle. Then Phineas, the priest and the leaders of the community that heads the clans of the Israelites, heard what Reuben, Gad, and Menesh had to say. They were pleased. And Phineas, son of Eleazar, the priest, said to Reuben, Gad and Manash, Today we know that the Lord is with us, because you have not been unfaithful to the Lord in this matter. Now you have rescued the Israelites from the Lord's hands. Then Phineas, son of Eleazar, the priest, and the leaders returned to Canaan from their meeting with the Reubenites, the Gadites, and in Gilead and reported to the Israelites. They were glad to hear the report and praised God, and they talked no more about going to war against them, to devastate the country where the Reubenites and the Gadites lived. And the Reubenites and the Gadites gave the altar this name, a witness between us that the Lord is God. Joshua, farewell to the leaders. After a long time had passed, and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua, by then a very old man, summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations it for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance for your tribes all the land, the nations that remain, the nations I conquered between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea in the west, and the Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. He will drive them out before you, and you will take possession of their land as the Lord your God promised you. But be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. But you are to hold fast to the Lord your God, as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day no one has been able to withstand you. One of your routes a thousand, because the Lord your God fought, fights for you, just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away and ally yourselves with the survivors of these nations and remain among that remain among you, and if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you must be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you whips on your backs and thorns in your eyes until you perish from the God from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your hearts and souls that not one of all the good all the good promises the Lord your God gave you have failed. Every promise he every promise has been fulfilled, not one has failed, but just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised you have come to you, so he will bring on you all the evil things he has threatened until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them. 
the Lord's anger will burn against you, and you will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. Joshua 24. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at she 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 Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nora lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him through Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country to Seir to Esau. But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I effect, afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. And when I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them by chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help. And he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the seas over them and covered them. And you saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hands. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, and did also the Amorites, Pezerites, Canaanites, Hittites, Gagashanites, Hevites, and Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you. Also the two Amorite kings, you did not do it with your own sword and bow, so I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from the vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord, to serve other gods. It was the Lord God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entry journey, entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land, that we too will serve the Lord, because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord 
He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make you or make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, You are witness, witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you, and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he reaffirmed, reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us as it has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance, buried in the promised land. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of a hundred and ten. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timonath, Sarer, Sierra, Sierra. Sarah, Timoth Sarah, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. And Joseph's bones which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shishkam in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamar, the father of Shish Shishkam. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. And Elzer, son of Aaron, died and was buried at Gibeah, which had been allotted to his son Phineas in the hill country of Ephraim. There you have it, Joshua 22 through 24. Time to hit Luke 3. John the Baptist prepares the way. In the 15th year of the reign of the Tiberius Caesar, when Pontus Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetra, ter, Tetrich of Galilee, Galilee, his brother Philip Tetrich of Itere, and Tachinitis and Lessinus Tacharis, Tacharich of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caphias, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight the path for him. Every valley shall be filled in every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. 
John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you, are brew, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produced fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can rise up a children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the tree, and even and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? the crowd asked. John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, What should we do? Don't collect any more taxes. Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, And what should we do? He replied, Don't extort money, and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting and expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you in water, with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the, stripe, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his thrashing floor and to gather the wheat into the, his barn. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhor exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch because of his marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. The Baptism of Genealogy of Jesus when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too, and as was, he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. A voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about thirty years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mahat, the son of Levi, the son of Malachi, the son of Jenai, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattath, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Islai, the son of Nigai, the son of Math, the son of Mathis, the son of Shemin, the son of Jasak, the son of Jodah, the son of Jonah, the son of Riesh, Rias, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shilatel, the son of Nair, the son of Malachi, and the son of Adai, the son of Kasam, the son of Ed El Medim, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Elzer, the son of Jerim, the son of Mattathim, the son of Levi, the son of Simon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, 
the son of Elikim, the son of Mele, the son of Menon, the son of Mattheth, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Solomon, the son of Nashon, the son of Ammon, dead, and the son of Ram, the son of Hezon, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abram, the son of Terah, the son of Nor, Nahor, the son of Serge, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Salash, the son of Canaan, the son of Arifex, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahathio, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, and the son of Adam, the son of God. Whew. And there you have Luke 3. And that concludes the Bible with Briscoe for today. And tomorrow we will be covering Judges 1 through 3 and Luke 4, 1 through 30. Father, I just pray that this was a blessing to you and to all of those that tuned in today. I also pray that they will all return tomorrow and we can continue with the Bible with Briscoe. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen.